Hello, friends, and welcome to episode 618 of the Juice Box Podcast. On today's show, I'll be speaking with Mila, and she's had type 1 diabetes for just a few months. Mila has a story and a job that fits very well into the After Dark episodes. So here we are again with another After Dark. While you're listening, please remember that nothing you hear on the Juice Box podcast should be considered advice, medical or otherwise. Always consult a physician before making any changes to your health care plan or becoming bold with insulin. I'm just going to tell you up front, in case you usually listen with your children, uh, Mila is a stripper, and she's going to talk about her job very candidly. So, all the things you imagine, we're going to talk about those. If you don't want to hear about sexual encounters, alcohol, drugs, philanderers, and other such things, don't listen. Also, when Mila talks about her breasts, she calls them titties. I bleeped it out, but a lot of titties in this. Having said all that, she's a lot of fun, and this is a good episode. I'd hang out. Say hello to Dexcom at Dexcom.com forward slash juice box. The Dexcom G6 continuous glucose monitor is... It's the bomb diggity. It's the bestest ever, in my opinion. And it's uh, possible that you can get a free trial of it. So why don't you head over to Dexcom.com forward slash juice box and say hello to Dexcom. The podcast is also sponsored by Omnipod, makers of the Omnipod Dash and the Omnipod Promise. I'll tell you right now, in this moment, that you may be eligible for a free 30-day supply of the Omnipod Dash. And the only way to find out is is to go to omnipod.com forward slash juice box. Later in the show, I'll give you more details, tell you about the promise, and other such things. I hope you're ready for Mila, because she's ready for you. Just one more time. Taste, 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 taste. It's going to happen a lot. Gird your loins. Hi, my name is Mila from Minnesota. Is Mila. that good? But, <laughs> I don't know. Are you happy with people thinking of you as Mila from Minnesota? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, then we're good. <laughs> um, yeah, perfect. Yeah. How um, how old are you? I'm 30. 30. How long have you had type 1? No. Um, I, just, I just got diagnosed on May 6th of 2021. No kidding. Yeah, so crazy. In May of 2021, it's January of 2022 right now, just for context. You've had it just for like seven months, and you're 30 years yeah. old. Yeah. Ooh. Um, Anyone in your family have type 1 diabetes? I guess, yeah. My mom said that, like, a lot of people on her side of the family, I guess, like, have it. But um, I don't know. She said, like, my uncles and shit have it. And I I guess, like, yeah, my uncles and stuff. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. (laughs) But people you don't know firsthand. Right. Yeah. Like, people I don't know. But I guess, like, I guess it runs in my family. But I I guess it, like, skipped my mom and dad, though. Okay. Just not something people have spoken about. How about, um, how are other autoimmune stuff like do you have a thyroid condition uh same no um no i don't have like anything else no (laughs) celiac anybody like your grandmom had celiac or something like that nothing i have no idea um my grandma my grandma definitely had diabetes and um I don't know what else. She, I don't know what else she yeah. had. She had a bunch of issues. It's, it's kind of a weird question because people either are very aware of it or they they're, they're like, I don't know my grandmother's medical history. You moron, you, you know. So, um, <laughs> but but your grandmother type one or type two, or did you do you not know? Um, I feel I don't. I think she was type two. Type two. Okay. So how um were you diagnosed? What happened and what sent you to the to the doctor? Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> well for. For the longest time, it's so crazy because, like, oh, yeah, I got diagnosed in May. In January, I was, like, in Mexico, but I could not stop peeing. Like, I literally, pee, like, peed my pants. And I just thought, I thought that, I just thought I had, like, a loose pee hole, to be honest. So I just didn't, I didn't, like, check into it or anything. And I just was, like, drinking a lot. And I remember getting really sick. I got, like, strep throat really, really bad. And then I came home. 
And I just like was just like drinking a lot, peeing a lot. And I got strep throat again. And then I like couldn't breathe. Like um, I was just like out of breath, like even just like talking, having a conversation. And my friends came over to like help me put together some furniture because I just moved. And um, they were just like, are you okay? Because like you should call the doctor. So I called the I called the doctor and um, the nurse was just like, um, she was just like really concerned because she was like, did you just like run a mile or like, why? Like you, like, I need you to get in an ambulance right now. Hmm. But m- my friends just drove me cause I live like, I live downtown. So I'm like around the corner anyways. Yeah. So they drove me there and I don't know, they brought me to the ER and then, uh, yeah, the doctor came in and just like asked me like, have you been like peeing and drinking a lot? And I was like, Oh my God. Yeah. She was like, yeah, we're pretty positive that you have diabetes. Wow. 30 years old. Hey, listen, uh, mm-hmm. this is just a, a friendly reminder to people. I just tried something. I don't think you should ever Google the words loose pee hole. Um, <laughs> so, Oh no. I was like, maybe she had a medical condition. I was like, no, nope, it's not what that was. Okay. Um, so don't do that. Oh my gosh. Just get a bunch of porn. Yeah. It just, just didn't, it didn't, it didn't go the way I was expecting. I like, I was trying to be ahead of the conversation. I'm like, I wonder if there's like a medical condition like that. And I was like, oops, nope, that's my fault. I should have done it. Yeah. I literally thought it was like broken. I was just like, I don't, maybe it needs to be tightened up. I don't know. <laughs> Like, and I had Googled too. I was like drinking a lot, peeing a lot. And it definitely said diabetes, but I was like, oh, Google's just trying to scare me. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think Google Google's is right this time? Listen, let's, <laughs> let's just be clear for a second, Mila. You don't believe that Google's after you, right? <laughs> what? You don't think Google's trying to like, you don't literally think of Google as a thing that's trying to get you. Do you? <laughs> no? No, no. Oh, okay. All right. Great. I just want to make sure that you know, you weren't paranoid. I, and I mean, if you are, it's fine. I just want well, to, I just want to know what I'm dealing well, with. You, you know, like when, like, I guess I am one of those people, like uh, if I'm sick or something, I like, I'll Google it. And then it's just like, it'll be like, you have a brain tumor, like something crazy. Yeah. No, so I, I, I usually just don't listen to it. Right. There are a lot of symptoms that point to a million things. And if you can't find one of those things at fault, there do become more serious issues that those, t- those, those specific symptoms actually point to as well. But people usually do jump right to the thing told me I had cancer, you know, like, so, and then yeah, later like, you found oh. out, you, you know, you have a loose tendon. I'm in like, your no way. Yeah. All right. So, <sighs> okay. um, you go into the hospital for this or. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they checked me and I, I was in ketoacidosis. They told me they were like, um, yeah, you were definitely like super lucky. You didn't slip into a coma. Cause I live by myself. So mm-hmm. I guess I was like, got there in the nick of time. And then I was there for like six days. Now, what about the, what happens next? Like when, when they get you kind of balanced out and they're going to send you home, do they send you home with an insulin pump or with needles or a pen? Yeah. So they, well, they had me talk to an educator and then they sent me home with two pens and um, like a, like a meter and like strips and stuff. And then I had to, when I went, when I had my appointment with my educator, um, that's when I got on the Dexcom. Okay. Um, I don't have a pump yet. Cause like I was at first, I was just like, no, I do not want that. Mm-hmm. But I just, I actually just met with my endo and I was just talking to him about the Omnipod. Cause I feel like I'd probably be better at it if I had that. So what was your first, um, like you were okay with the Dexcom, but you were thinking no to a pump. Yeah. Like what was your thinking there? Well, it's, well, it's just like my job. Like I'm a dancer. So I just like, was like, I don't want like too many things like, like on my body, but, um, now I'm just like, okay, I don't really think it matters actually. Mm-hmm. Like, well, and so you're going to be comfortable with it now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, because I'm just, it's just too much work. Like having like these, these pens and just like having, I eat out a lot and just like having to like, I don't like, I'll pull it out and stuff. But I just feel like it's just like a, a lot of extra work kind of. I hear you. No, no, no it's you. actually a lot of extra work. Like it's a lot. Carrying things, keeping insulin cool, I guess, stuff like that. The whole entire thing. Yeah. It's just like, a, it's just like, I have to think all the time. It's ridiculous. I gotcha. So y- you said a second ago that you're a dancer. That's actually why you're on the show, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mill is mm-hmm. M- Mill is here to, to make an after dark episode. Is that correct? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dancer, <laughs> stripper, yeah. <laughs> so 
I don't know. I'm trying to like work my way through this. Um, but I think you sent me a note on Instagram saying like that the podcast has been helpful. Was that about right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Cause you had like this good episode with like, uh, well, I mean, they're all good, but like you had this one that like, uh, she was talking about like doing Coke and shit. And I was like, what was it? Wait, am I allowed to swear? You've, um, you've said shit twice. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll just, I have to, I'll edit it out later. You're fine. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah you yeah, do yeah. be saying that. Right. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was just like, oh, like that, like, I don't know. It just like resonated because it's just, yeah, I do it all the time. So, okay. So you use cocaine? Well, yeah. Right. And then you, so you saw that and you're like, huh, this is a representation of my life right here. Yeah. 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 Cause like, I don't know. I just have like a very much party lifestyle, I suppose you would say. Okay. Um, how long have you been d- dancing? 10 years. Wow. Do they give you like a, like a medal? or something (laughs) they should yeah i'm like a veteran now they would say so my first question about this is going to probably surprise you but are you like a contractor like for your taxes do you like are you yeah okay yeah yeah 1099 yeah Yeah. um not not like not all clubs do it like you can be an employee if you want to be but they'll just like take your money so so are you like a do you have one place that you dance or do you have a few places or how do you do that I just have one place because it's just like my home club and I love it there. But I mean, a lot of a lot of people like travel and stuff like I, I you could work wherever if you wanted to. OK, so now my, my not my confusion, but my real interest when I kind of like, you know, when people message me, I click kind of through to see who they are. And mm-hmm. I think you describe yourself as a sex worker. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What does that term encapsulate? It could be a lot of different things, right? Sure. Well, yeah, I just think it's like anybody, like anybody who like works in the sex industry, like escort, strippers, cam girl, um, people who work outside, um, basically like, you know, porn stars, anybody who just like works in this, like in the sex industry, like yeah. sells like sex basically. And like, doesn't like necessarily mean like, have sex. you know, like, like like having sex but i mean it can I mean, sure you know. no no but it, it, it could include that but it doesn't necessarily mean that right yeah yeah in your case it doesn't necessarily mean that i mean i i could if, if somebody was paying enough I but see, but see. for now no just a stripper <laughs> so so no one has um has offered you that upgrade yet but if they did, oh, ev- oh everybody offers oh oh really okay here oh we, yeah here we go so I've actually never met a more single man than a married man. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I've never met a more single man than a married man. Like single in their head. Oh yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Gotcha. When they're out on business, they're naughty boys. Should be a comforting episode for married ladies everywhere. So um <laughs> he's cheating. <laughs> so where does the um how does the floor work? Is there is there kind of like a main stage where people cycle through and then you kind of go down on the floor and look for lap dances, stuff like that, private dances? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, like you go on stage you just and then you you just go on the floor and talk to people and see if they like want to do VIP or do a dance or something. Yeah, I mean, pretty simple. Have you been to a strip club? I mean, I'm old now, but I have been in the past. Yeah, I mean, I, you know. <laughs> But but Wait, so, older guys go to strip club all the time. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm pretty old. Like I just my knee hurts. You know what I mean? Like if, you, <laughs> if 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 you came down and like sat on my lap, I'd be like, oh my god, my knee, Mila. <laughs> like you'd be like, you want me to rub you? And I'm like, only if it's gonna be my knee. So <laughs> um, <laughs> you know what I mean? But so you're saying that when you get when when you head off into a private room, give me give me mm-hmm. the breakdown out of every ten guys. How many of them want some sort of actual contact? Oh, out of every 10? Like, wait, out of every 10, who wants to go to VIP? You, yeah, of every 10 guys that you're in a private room with, how many of, of those 10, how many say to you, hey, what is the next level? Oh, how that? many, like, ask me to go to their hotel room? <laughs> right. Uh, I would say, like, 9 out of 10. And they want you just to do it. They don't want to. They're not like, hey, I have a business transaction for you. They're, they just think that they're. Oh, okay. no, like, they like they want. Yeah, they want to pay, but. It's just like, you know, like I ain't trying to lose my job. So it's just like, I'm just like, why don't you just, you know, get another hour. Right. We'll stay here and we'll do this. I see. (laughs) And is that sort of part of the, I don't want to call it a game, but is that sort of part of the business? Like just get them very excited, but then keep them there spending money? 
Oh yeah, for sure. I yeah. mean, you know, I, I always tell them like, you know, there's no sex in the champagne room, but uh, guys are very, uh, I don't know, visual creatures. And, and, and they can get very single minded. Yeah, imagine. you put a titty in the dude's face and he really ain't thinking about much else. <laughs> That's just what happens. I <laughs> <laughs> empty their wallets pretty quick. That's insane. <laughs> um, and they and do you think that they believe that there's going to be some sort of a more personal ending to this? Or do you think Oh, I've seen dudes like um like propose to girls in VIP. Like guys the, some people get very delusional. Do they ever come back an hour later and they're like, I didn't mean to do that? No, these are like regulars. So like they've probably been seeing a girl like forever. I used to have a guy who used to like bring me in mac and cheese all the time and pizza because he knew I loved like cheese. <laughs> and he like thought he was my boyfriend, but I never seen him outside the club. But in his head, like I was his girlfriend. Yeah. It's just very interesting. How does that how does that all manifest on your side? Like you don't think he's your boyfriend, obviously. And and you're oh, not no. and you're not asking him to bring you macaroni and cheese, but once he does it, I love that macaroni and cheese is the example. And that <laughs> you know, but once he brings you your mac and cheese, you're like, huh, you ate it? Yeah. <laughs> so then you're like, <laughs> Well, right. it's like he would bring me the Velveeta boxes. It, so I would take it home. Like he was so Oh, yeah, he was just that was when the, I lived in Guam. He was just throwing the shaky box at you, and he was like, "Here, honey, all you need to do is add water, and you've got a meal." <laughs> yeah, he yeah. was literally bringing like a whole grocery bag for me. Yeah. And do you think that that alone, in his mind, he thought you were going to like translate out of this setting into a real life with him? Do you think he thought that was going to happen, or do you think he just likes the idea that he's got someone to talk to? Oh, I, th- I mean, I think that he for sure thought that I was his girlfriend and that because but he because he would always be like well how come you don't see me to the club uh what come to my dad's house like just weird things like I mean you know it's, he definitely thought so but not all guys like most guys like no like they know what it is like okay. all right. but uh some of them get a little confused yeah I got you does it but ever- that's fine now you know I was his friend yeah no I understand yeah I and you don't see it as um you don't see it as a one-sided affair, right? Like both both parties are getting something out of it. Oh, for sure, yeah. yeah. Okay, like you don't feel like you're taking advantage of anybody. Oh no, I mean he's got my whole body in his mouth. He's having a good time. <laughs> it's a fair trade. <laughs> I think so. I, 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 so now you got me thinking. Like, <laughs> what would I trade for a bag of macaroni and cheese on my end? It's, it's a, you're right. It does oh wait, fair. no, he also gave me money. <laughs> Oh, I understand. You wouldn't just. Mila's like, listen. If you ever figure out who I am, please do not show up just with canned goods and try to get with me. <laughs> yeah, literally. Like, that isn't going to be enough. That's hilarious. What's an hour cost? Um, an hour at my club costs six hundred an hour. Wow, that's crazy. Um, How but it is- usually ends up being like um. Like I tell most guys, like at least you're gonna at least spend like eight hundred because that's just for me, and you gotta tip the waitress too. And then if you get a bottle of champagne, it's gonna be much more because we usually get like good champagne, so it's usually like eight hundred to twelve hundred dollars for the bottle. How many people do you think in, in a shift? How long is a shift? First of all, how long? What? Oh, how, how long, long is a shift? Yeah. Um, I usually get there at, at nine, and then I'll stay until like two or three. How many people can you see in those five hours? Mm, I think it just depends. Like, it just depends how busy it is. But if I'm, but really, like, I'm just trying to find like one guy to bring upstairs. Okay. How much um, of the six hundred? How much do you keep? I keep five hundred and a hundreds for the table. Okay. Um. Yeah, and then um, usually I ask for a hundred percent tip. So. And do they do that? Oh yeah. These guys, because the guys at my, like at my club, like these guys are like, like they wipe their ass with money. Like they're like rich. So I don't have a problem being like, give me all of your money. I see. So it's not like you're not taking like little Johnny's like inhaler money. No, I'm right, right. I'm taking Johnny's dad's money. You're taking Johnny's dad's money. And Johnny's and he's the CEO of a company. <laughs> I gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. You think it's, um, do you think it's about sex? Do you think it's about power? Do you think it's about loneliness? Like what, do you, I mean, how much time do you think spend thinking about the the psychology of what's happening? 
Mm, I think that it can be like just a, I guess like a bunch of different things. It really just depends, I guess, like what the person wants when they come in. Because a lot of times we like to say like, we're basically like naked therapists because guys will come in and just be like, complain about like their families and their wives and they'll like pay us to do it while just like our titties are out so yeah we're basically naked therapists most of the time but a lot of times sometimes too I guess it's just like to parties so then it'll be like yeah about sex like they just want to see some titties and have some drinks Mm -hmm. you know super fun time um sometimes it's about business a lot of business guys take like their partners in to like show them a good time so like sign the deal later or whatever I have to tell you, as you're saying this, it occurs to me, I've never had a bad time with boobs. So I think you're yeah. right. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here really hard pressed to think of a time where there were boobs available. And I was like, oh, this is terrible. Yeah. Like, oh, no. Yeah. Hot girls, boobs and booze. Like, you really can't. It's a mix. Think around. Now, you, you said earlier that you, um, you use Coke. So do you do it as a way to, like, is it functional? Like, do you do it to work or do you do it? personally no it's just like a party thing like actually i don't even buy it like it's, people just like it's just, it's, i feel like like not even just in like this like the sex industry but like in like the like in like the bar industry and like the restaurant industry like all these like all the waitresses and all the bartenders like <laughs> they're are they're all on coke um m- most of them okay and i don't know it's just like it just gets offered to me, and if I'm drunk, I'll ju- I'll do it. It's it's not something like I I guess I don't. If I'm sober, I'm like actually I'm like ew gross. Like get that shit away from me. But if I'm drunk, I'm like why is this so kind? Really? I don't know. It's just yeah. It's my, I guess it's like I would say it's like a social thing, like smoking a cigarette. Like I see. Oh, it's, okay. Are you yeah, talking it's about- just there. It's always there. And and now I'm gonna do some use some words I don't have any context for, but you're talking about like what I guess would colloquially be considered like a bump. You're not, or a line or like, or, or yeah, all, not, yeah. All, not all night kind of a thing. No, no. Yeah. I mean, I mean, on new year's I did get home at 8 AM, but you know, besides, besides that, no, yeah. I'm not like uh, doing an eight ball a night or anything. I'd probably you. be dead. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what that means, but I agree with you. So, uh, Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm in my mind, I'm imagining an eight ball on a pool table, right? It's about, is that, well, yeah. Is that the vibe? Yeah. It's like an eight ball is like $250 worth of Coke, which in a gram is like 80 bucks. So an eight ball is like three grams basically or like 2.5. And you're not paying for it. No, no, no. So it's no, the- honestly, people just like the, it's just crazy how many people do it. Mm-hmm. Like, well, and to me, like, I always think like people who like don't do coke or have like never touched it or like think it's like like taboo or like scary, but like in my like to me, I'm like, I, I, every so many people do it, it's like mind boggling. Yeah, in your world, you see it constantly. Yeah, yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. Do you ever worry about like fentanyl? Yes. Yeah. Um, there was, well, especially after like what happened like in LA with those comedians, like they all like died. Yeah. But um, yeah, I guess there was a bad batch going around Minneapolis like a, like a month ago. And um, I definitely got a couple of text messages like, Hey, mm-hmm. like don't, don't do anything. But um, yeah, that's scary. Crazy question. Does your job offer a 401k plan? Omnipod makes the Omnipod Dash, and they also make the Omnipod Promise. And here's what that promise says to you. If for some reason you start, let's say, let's make up a story here. Let's say you hear this today and you go, oh, that guy's compelling. I'm going to get me that Omnipod Dash. And you reach out to Omnipod and find out you're eligible for a free 30-day supply of Omnipod Dash. And you do it, right? You use it for 30 days, and at the end, you're like, you know what? Darn it, I'm going to keep doing this Dash thing. I love it. So you call them up. You're like, hello, Dexcom. And they're like, hello, because they're polite. And um, you say, I'm going to keep going with this Dash thing, right? And then let's say, I don't know, a few days later, there's a big announcement. And Omnipod is making something new, something exciting. And you were like, oh, I wanted that new thing. 
you're not stuck with the Omnipod Dash. Not by the way that you'd be stuck with it as it's pretty darn terrific. But I'm saying if you wanted to upgrade to something else, to the next new thing, you can. That's the Omnipod Promise. The Omnipod Promise isn't something written down on a piece of paper. You don't have to pinky swear when you get your dash. Nothing like that. Just if you want to move up to the next big thing and it's covered by your insurance, you can. It's that simple. Omnipod.com forward slash juice box. Head over there today. Find out about this tubeless insulin pump they call the Omnipod. See how wonderful it is. Find out if you're eligible for the 30-day trial of the Dash. Get started. Live a life unencumbered. Get control of your blood sugars with the greatest pump I've ever laid my hands on. Hello, Dexcom. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, Dexcom. Maybe you're eligible for a free 10-day trial of the Dexcom G6 Continuous Glucose Monitor. Here's how you'll find out. You'll use your fingers. You'll put them onto your phone where the buttons are or on your computer. Like I have a computer in front of me right here. Let me show you. Wait, not show you, but I mean, I'll do it and I'll explain it while it's happening. Dexcom.com forward slash juice box. I've pushed enter and then pops up in front of me. Boom, it's magic. Actually, it's not magic. It's the internet. We're all used to it. But, oh, before you go, it says, it, it, it felt me wanting to leave the webpage. And it says, before you go, interested in a free Dexcom G6 sample? And there's a question mark like, hello, are you interested? And it says, our 10-day trial empowers you to make more informed decisions and delivers a new level of diabetes management. Hello, Dexcom. And then you just hit request a sample. Boy, that sounds easy, doesn't it? Dexcom.com forward slash juice box. Everyone can click on the words request a sample. It's that easy. When you get it, you're going to get yourself a continuous glucose monitor that tells you if your blood sugar is rising or falling and how fast it's doing that. It's also going to tell you what your blood sugar is. Like I know my daughter's blood sugar is on its way down from a little bit of a high blood sugar right now. Let me see what it is. 122 and it's stable, but I can tell on the graph that it's kind of drifting lower. That's the kind of up-to-the-date information that Dexcom delivers right to your receiver or smartphone. Do not delay. Head over there today. I almost rhymed and then I stopped myself. Dexcom.com forward slash juice box. Omnipod.com forward slash juice box. Support the sponsors. Support the show. Again, that was one solid take. I am on a roll this week. You can find links to these sponsors and all of the sponsors of the podcast right there in the show notes of your podcast player or at juiceboxpodcast.com. Now we're going to find out if Mila has a 401k plan and a lot, a lot more. I mean, this one's going to don't sleep on this episode. Keep listening. <laughs> there's a lot. There's a lot coming still. No, no, no. Um, but we do have like. There's like um, there's like like sex worker like I don't know. It's like this group of sex workers have like this whole thing, and they're like talking to the mayor and stuff, and they're trying to get like better, um, better benefits and stuff like health insurance, like just basic shit for like dancers and shit. Because the uh, we would don't get any of that. Mm, yeah, I mean, it's just a, so. Are you? This is a crazy and personal question. I can't believe that this is the first time I've thought this is too personal to ask, but. Um, <laughs> That's great. Are you saving money? Yeah. <laughs> Can you believe that? That's yes, what I, yeah. I was like, I yeah. can't ask and this. And you know what? A any other stripper out there like better start saving their money because a lot of girls just like run through their money so fast because it's just fast money, but gotta well, save. To, you know, oddly, I'm kind of comparing you to like an athlete in my head because yeah. it's, it's or like a runway model, right? Because at some time, I mean, to be frank and to use your words, at some point, a guy's going to walk in there, see your titties, see somebody else's titties, and yours are going to look older, and they're going to be like, I'm going to go with this girl, and then you're just going to be like, oh, geez, I, I got another job, <laughs> like, right? Like, do, do you think I that mean, I guess if they start, like, like if they start looking ugly at some point, but. And I'm not I saying they so. do. Let's be clear. <laughs> and what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, is that, like, your body is, like, it's your, I mean, it's your product, right? Like, so what happens when your body if your body becomes a product that people aren't as 
you know, desirous of happening, you know, and then. Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, I guess I don't, I, I, I'm not going to like stay in the business and time like 50, but there are girls that I know that are like in their upper forties and they usually make way more money than the younger girls because like at, like at the end of the day, like, yeah, like it's about like your body and your trees and stuff. But if you have like a mouthpiece on you, like if you know how to like talk to a man and talk him out of his wallet and talk him upstairs, um, that's really all you need. Like a pig in a wig can make money, you know? <laughs> oh, wow. We're so close to that being the name of your episode, except I don't think you're a pig in a wig, but that's a great <laughs> term. Um, okay. So, so what do you think you'll do after this? Well, I just want to save a bunch of money and, and like buy a house on the beach and like open a bar. Hmm. But, you know, I mean, and also like I do plan on having a rich husband. So, so that'll help. So this has been in the back of my head for about the last, you know, all but the first 35 seconds we were talking. You're going to make <laughs> like, if you if you can find somebody you really like, you're going to make like from the perspective of getting what you want, you're probably going to have a fairly good time of being married is what I was thinking. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so do you date while you're like, do you have like, mm -hmm. a, like a, somebody in your life? Well, actually I just got out of like a five-year relationship. I'm, a, I'm such a relationship girl. Actually, I'm always in a relationship, but I've been single this past year. So, okay. So that's interesting. So you were five years with somebody while you were working Mm -hmm. dancing yeah and, and how yeah i would never i wouldn't date somebody who like didn't who like had a problem with my job i don't imagine you could like, no I, yeah well i mean girls would do it and then they'll their boyfriends will try to make them quit like i'm just yeah, too think, much money to quit i think that's a different psychological issue trying to save people like that feeling like you're gonna upgrade them or help them or get them out of something is that's, yeah, that's which I just think is ridiculous because you just if you want them like work behind a desk for less money, that doesn't make any sense mm -hmm. to me. So how did that go? Like, I mean, where I'm trying to imagine like you're like, hey, I gotta go to work, and your his boyfriend? Yeah. Yeah, and your boyfriend's like, that's great. Get those boobs in somebody's face, honey. We gotta buy the we gotta buy food. Like, is that like what's yeah, the level no, of he used to drop me off every every night and give me a kiss before I went in and yeah, I would come home and be like, I made $2,000. And he'd be like, yay. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, it was a good time. It, usually, like, they, like usually my boyfriends be, like, jealous. Like, wow, fuck you for making that much in one night. Because it's so much money. It's more than they're making. Yeah, and he's over here, like, working his ass. <laughs> so you think, like, there's a, like, there's a lot of respect about the amount of money that you're bringing in? Hmm. I think if you have respect for sex workers, then I, then you can respect the money that they bring in. But if you don't, I guess if you don't have respect for sex workers, then usually like the money doesn't matter because they'll they'll still be like Ooh, degrading or some dumb shit. Well, yeah. and then go watch porn. Like, so it's just like okay, gotcha. So not okay for you, but it's okay for the girl in the video. Right, exactly. Yeah. So I just a lot of people. I don't know. I think they're just kind of jaded by like what society has taught them about like sex work and then it really like it can bring like women out of poverty like it can do a lot for you mm -hmm. it definitely brought me out of poverty so so i want to ask you a little bit about that and then i have some diabetes questions so um yeah <laughs> have you at some point we'll talk i mean you, you don't <laughs> for anyone listening you don't come on here and say you're a dancer and then like i'm not going to ask you about like your temp basils for pizza you know what i mean so um, <laughs> not right away at least um do you ever feel degraded and is is feeling that way is feeling that way in your control or is it in someone else's control? Well, first of all, no, I, I, I never feel degraded because like, I'm not ashamed of my job or anything like that. And I feel like if anybody, like anybody in the industry does feel that way, that they should maybe think twice about being in it because, um, I mean, you got to respect what you're doing. And so, and if you do, then nobody can really make you feel like, sh and anybody who, and any guy who has like tried to be rude to me, like, I'm allowed to, I can hit you. I can pour champagne on your face. Like, I don't, you know, I'm not going to, I don't have to sit there and like take you being rude to me. I can also get you kicked out. Right. And so it's like, I hold all the power. Have you, so. have you ever felt bad about yourself? No, 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 not, not, not as far as like dancing or anything. No, no. Okay. And your job, uh, before this, before you did this, what did you do before that? 
Um, I worked at this bar in, well, St. Paul, I guess nobody knows. But um, yeah, I worked at this cop bar, actually. It was like a Bears slash cop bar. Mm -hmm. And then before that, I worked at a gas station. (laughs) But yeah, the the bar is what, the bar is what brought, like the bar is what got me into stripping. Because I, this girl came in one time and she was like my age, but she had like a Louis Vuitton bag and all this nice shit. And I was like, how the fuck is she affording this? And she told me she's a stripper. And I was like, I'm literally going tomorrow. I'm a stripper too. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like what? Okay. I, was, I, I, I know. I, I, I swear I'll get to the next thing, but you keep saying interesting <laughs> things. What's the interview process like? Oh, there's no interview. You just audition. So basically like you get on stage and they, they, they watch you do two songs. And then like, if they like you, they like you. And if they don't, they don't. And are there all different? Are there all different body types kind of represented in in a club? No, no. Most clubs are assholes, but um, <laughs> some clubs, yeah, will like let like a like a not just tiny skinny little girls be working. But um, a lot of places. I remember when I I was like 130 pounds, and this club told me to lose 30 pounds, and I'm five seven, so that's like insane. So I'm, I, I don't know how you yeah. could have lost 30 pounds when you weigh 130 pounds if you're 5'7". It sounds like you would have. Yeah, been. exactly. I would have been like a skeleton. So they want super skinny girls usually? Some some places. Some places, yeah. Um, my place, when we had our old manager, he like wouldn't hire like anybody who was like like even like thick. Like if you had like too much ass, he would be like, go to the, go to the other club. Oh, but, um, okay. they, now, they, now we got rid of him, so we have we have uh, more diversity. Nice. Is there are there any girls that have like, I don't know, like a trick pitch, like something you know what I mean? Like some guys throw fastballs and sliders, but every once in a while, a guy's got a curveball. Like you know, is there anything in the business that like makes you like can separate you? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like thinking like I get I mean I, I don't know I don't know what you mean like separate you how like by your looks or like no like you've got like a special talent of some sort like I don't know oh oh yeah 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 I mean yeah some girls do like cool shit on stage um not me though not you, <laughs> you just, I you, just have nice boobs and <laughs> and just, I'm fun I'm a fun time <laughs> that's yeah. it that, that sounds like a t-shirt nice boobs fun time I think that that pretty much encapsulates the entire thing. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Well, that's all I wanted. Like, I was just wondering if there were like um, genres of strippers. Do you know what I mean? Like, is stripper a bad word, yeah. by the way? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, no, no. Not unless, I guess, unless you're saying it like in a derogatory like, I, way. But I, I no. Definitely, I, I think after a half an hour, we can tell that I definitely am not saying it in a derogatory way. So, right. Yeah, yeah. No. I mean, that's what we do with stripper. I'm trying to decide if I want to tell you the the story I have that brought this thought up in my head. Oh my god! Please do it. Please I, I was like, I was. I think we were really young. We were like in our early twenties, and somebody, somebody, one of us was getting married, and so there's a bachelor party, and we showed up at this club, and I, I'm going to admit to you, I'm not very comfortable in that setting, like in <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, so I'm, and I don't drink, so. It's a oh yeah you don't yeah it's a weird vibe for me so now like you're sort of just like stone cold sober in the middle of a room with a lot of girls <laughs> not wearing their tops and guys who are really drunk who are acting more like you know you're describing than I'm acting <laughs> so I'm just trying to like stay busy like if that makes sense you know what I mean keep, yeah keep moving stay busy so oh I'm just gosh. wandering around looking for people who I know to speak with and I look up. And this girl is, I, I don't know how to say this. Um, I mean, I guess I just have to say it the way it happened. She's um, shooting breast milk into the crowd off of the stage. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And I, I was, this has happened before. Guys love this shit. <laughs> so I saw a man, and I swear for anybody who listens to this who knows me, it was not a person in our group, that just saw it and stopped and acted like it was a water fountain and just turned to the stage and my brain like said to me like what are we doing here <laughs> like 
what are we doing? And I was frozen for a minute in just the ridiculousness of what was happening. And then I, I moved on. Um, oh my God. Yeah. That's, so that's what made me wonder like this, like, can somebody do something weird or like special? Yes. I, I, yeah, actually there's this one girl who definitely still has milk in her. And she was last time we were in VIP, she was squirting it in this dude's face. Guys just like weird shit sometimes. Like, and they love pregnant girls too. Right? Pre- pregnant girls are, are popular. Yeah, like they like they will like rub your belly and your feet and like give you money. I think that's like you know the Captain Save a Ho type vibe, but mm-hmm. they love it. Captain Save a Ho. <laughs> <laughs> you slip a lot of fun stuff in, like at the ends of your sentences. I'm just I'm I'm trying very hard to pay attention. So um, <laughs> okay, so you come back though. So you're out of work for a while. I imagine. Did you lose weight when you were diagnosed? Oh my god, I was so skinny. And I just thought it was because I stopped drinking for two weeks. And I was like, wow, alcohol really puts a lot of pounds on you. No, I lost. <laughs> I went from, I'm usually 145. I went from 145, whatever, <laughs> like 20 pounds. So whatever the math is. Okay. 120. 130. Well, 145, is you that? lost 20. Yeah. All right, 125. <laughs> yeah. Are you yeah, sure yeah. you're saving money? I mean, if you, 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 maybe you're, oh, <laughs> maybe you're yeah, not. I mean, I was only out of work. I was only out of work for, I mean, those six days that I was in the hospital. Gotcha. Um, did, did any of the girls come to visit you? No, because it was freaking coat. Like I was only allowed to have like one visitor a day. So oh, that's right. just my sister and my, and my ex came to see me, but oh. I was, it's, I was only allowed to have them. In my head, it was an eighties comedy with starring Eddie Murphy and like seven dancers showed up at the hospital and then they started dancing <laughs> for the doctors. And anyway, none of that happened. You're saying strippers should definitely be allowed to just like go dance for people in the, in you the would hospital. Think it would be an uplifting experience. So. And yeah. If, and, and old homes too. I think you're onto something. Why don't you start a business? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think it's allowed. I have one customer who he, he had one of his girls in his room after he had a heart attack and he got kicked out of the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> do do customers flame out like do you see them a lot for short periods of time then they're gone and then there's somebody new or do you have people oh yeah for years yeah 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 people definitely well for me like most of my customers like don't even live in minnesota at all like they're from like new york or la or something um and they come here like once a year so i mean they'll hit me up like once a year but hmm. That's but great. other than that, yeah, they all come and go. Wow. Um, okay, so you leave the hospital, you get a Dexcom. Like, is like, where do you wear the Dexcom usually? I usually wear it on my arm. I've I only wore it on my stomach one time. Okay. Do people like do guys? I mean, I guess women come to clubs too, right? To see women dance. But do do? Yeah, I guess you guess. <laughs> You're like those. You can't get them confused and take their money, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i don't really i don't talk to girls when they come in <laughs> i see um so w- but guys you- yeah guys have said stuff to me like drunk guys have been like what the f- is that uh, uh, really? <laughs> but, uh, yes and then like a lot of them are like is that birth control interesting now do you do you explain to them what it is or do you just not ignore them i just i kill their vibe and i'm like it's for my diabetes <laughs> And every time they're like, oh, but sometimes other people have diabetes too. Like this one guy, he, we were like, we were like, well, Dex, come. And like, we like, hit, like put our arms together and he got like some dances from me and we were like diabetes buddies. That's crazy. That's, so. that's kind of nice. <laughs> um, yeah. so, so people will comment on it and they'll yell out stuff. You'll tell them what it is. So you're not afraid to tell somebody even in that. Do you know what I mean? Like that you don't think that, yeah. that makes you less attractive. You don't have that feeling at all. No, yeah, no, 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 because like what? No, <laughs> no. That's excellent. I, I guess if you, I feel like if if you see me naked, you would not be paying attention to my Dexcom. You know. Oh, look at you, Mila. Very confident. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Men aren't that hard. <laughs> Wait. Oh, difficult. Men aren't that difficult. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. I'm assuming these guys are all hard. They're just not difficult. Yes. Yes. I got it. <laughs> See, I can do wordplay too. I'm good at this. Um, okay, so th- now you're sh- injecting. So, what's your goal, like blood sugar? Well, I guess let me ask you this first. I mean, you've only had diabetes for seven months, really. 
how are you making yeah. out? Like, where's your A1C? Like, what are you able to, what have you been able to accomplish so far? Um, well, when I went in, it was 16 and, um, I just went in recently and it was 7.4. So my doctor was like, um, he's like, yeah, we just like want to bring it like under seven. Mm -hmm. But, um, I don't know. He's like 16 to 7.4. That's pretty good. But, um, for a first jump, it's, it's huge. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. But yeah. And then he sent me an email and he's like, but yeah, like, let's like get that under there. Right. So, yeah, I was just like running high for these past two months because like sometimes I just really don't know what the is going on. Like, yeah, yeah. No, I, I feel like I do everything right and it just is like does what it wants. Okay, so what kind of diet do you have? Like, do you eat like a um, fairly? Like, I I just eat out a lot. I, uh, restaurant food. I, I before I had diabetes, I was like the type of girl to eat. Like, I usually I would eat cake like once a day like just I, I i love cake and like ice cream i got a sweet tooth girl like cake ice cream chocolate mm -hmm. pasta all carbs <laughs> and and now um i'm just not that good at i just feel like i get the doses wrong like i'll like i'll like so i just don't eat it that much anymore because i don't like to deal with it like so i don't know if i don't feel like injecting or anything i'll just eat like cheese and meat but okay or like stuff with no carbs. And then I, if I feel like dealing with it, then I'll do it. But so while you're, annoying. while you're working, do you usually eat while you're working? Mm -mm, no, no, I usually, I don't eat. I guess I, I eat like once a day. Um, I usually I'll snack, I snack on like meats and meat and cheese. I'm like a super cheat. Like I'm like a cheese whore. Like I just love cheese. Like I can have like seven string cheeses in like three hours. Mm -hmm. So good. But, um, <laughs> That's what I live off of. Um, you should have told the yeah, guy, vitamins, cheese, here. and dinner. Okay, and and so like, do you ever find yourself having to inject at work? Like, is there a number you want to stay under while you're working? And does dancing? Yeah, I mean, how much of a fallacy is the word dancing? Like, I mean, you're not up there flash dance, right? Like, it's is it a right? No, I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm up there moving. I guess I don't know. I'm like shaking my ass and we'll do a do. It's definitely a workout, but mm -hmm. um. And it's like, uh, yeah, two songs, uh, like 10 minutes of dancing. Um, but yeah, no, I try to, well, obviously I want to stay under, I guess I try to be under, under 180, I guess. Um, and then like above, like, I, I guess I don't like to be like, I guess like I'd rather be like above like a hundred at least, I guess. Um, cause I just get scared. I've, I don't know. I've been like in like the seventies before and I was there and it just like, then I gotta drink the juice and sit there and have anxiety. I, I that's what I was wondering. Like, have you ever gotten low while you were dancing, or have you ever been low when you were the customer privately? Yeah, well, no, the lowest I've ever been with like a customer in dancing is like seventy, and that's because I was like doing shots of tequila and shit. And okay, I mean, and, and I guess it was easy to fix. I guess it's not that scary when I'm at the club. It's when it, it's scary when I'm like by myself at home. That's that's when it's scary. What did your employer have to say? Like you, I'm assuming you came back and said, well, I have diabetes. Did, did, did you like feel, do people understand what that means? Like, would somebody there know how to help you if you had a problem? I mean, hardly, but I mean, yeah, I just like, I, I guess if I pass out, like give me some juice or sugar or something, Wait. but most people have no idea what is what it is but and um they knew though because like my like my uh my friends and stuff told them and he was just like they were just checking on me and i didn't do i didn't do stage for like the first week that i was back and um they just was like kept asking me like is your diabetes okay <laughs> i'm like yeah i'm good <laughs> um and that's like but as far yeah i guess it's as far as they know and i'm just like i never let myself i guess get to the point where i i feel it like i where i would like need them to like help me mm -hmm. like if, i never i don't know i never i never really go under like barely go low there i've been low like one time that wasn't even it was only like 70 so gotcha do you carry glucagon with you no i have um those glucose tablet mm -hmm. and then but I some I don't really even bring those to work because I just they just have like you know juice and pop and stuff. Yeah. Hey, so if you're a contractor, then you don't have health insurance through your job, right? Right. No, and I actually didn't have health insurance until I got diabetes, and then they were like, "Oh, emergency, life changing 
some type of shit like that. Okay. And so they gave me insurance. What What do you have, like Medicaid? I think um, Is it's it called. The state? I mean, yeah, it's like I don't know. It's like it's like medical assistance, like under the state. So yeah. I'm guessing, yeah, it's Medicaid. Okay. Right? Um, Medicaid yeah, or Medicare? Know. I think it depends on. I'm not sure. Honestly. Yeah. I just have a three dollar copay. That's not. Oh, that's pretty great. And you're going to be able to get a pump. Yes. Yeah. So I have to. I'm supposed to make a, an appointment with my educator about the, so she can like explain to me that my different choices. Gotcha. Um, even though I only want one though. Yeah. Uh, what is so? You said that drinking can affect your affect your blood sugar. How does it affect it? Well, drinking, honestly, like usually, um, I feel like every time after I drink, my blood sugar is just perfect for the entire day. Um, What do you drink? It doesn't. Is it harder alcohol or beer or? Oh, no. I just drink tequila like and and Diet Coke. So it's like I'm not like shooting up or anything because I don't like mix any sugar with it. So it just it really just brings me down, really. But it doesn't bring me like low. I gotcha. I'll just I'll basically. I, like right now because i'm definitely hung over right now you're hung over right now it's, yeah so just, like last night. <laughs> do you are there ever nights that you go to work and you're just like i'm not drinking and i'm not doing any coke like i'm just gonna i'm just here and i'm gonna like take some of this money well yeah yeah i there. mean yeah like not it's not every time it's right. just like there's a lot of times i go to work and i'm like no drinks for me um, but it's just hard for me to say no when like when a dude's like, Do you want a shot of tequila? <laughs> um Do you see that as yeah. kind of part of your job or do you just want the tequila? No, yeah, I just want the tequila. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a little bit of an alcoholic over here. Uh, uh, I was gonna I uh, do you feel like you couldn't say no? I I c- I guess I could if I wanted to. Okay. Um, right, I don't, I mean, but I don't know if that, I don't know what that means. So. I don't know what that means either. I was just that's I'm just asking <laughs> questions. That's all. This is all just based on your life and your answers. I have I have no idea about any of this so far. All I've added to this is that I saw a lady lactating in a strip club 25 years ago. <laughs> so I've really I've really added nothing else to the conversation so far. And <laughs> there's an argument to be made. I haven't added anything at all. Although I got to oh tell you, God. in memory, it was a funny memory. <laughs> Oh, that is hilarious. And it wasn't the lady that was the funny part. It was the the, the person, the gentleman. Let's call him a gentleman, even though, let's be honest, I don't think he was. But um, <laughs> Degenerate. It's, it's because it, yeah, it's because it caught him by surprise. Here was the fascinating part about it. He was not looking at the stage. He was walking past the stage. He caught what I guess you would call shrapnel. Do you know what I mean? He got <laughs> he had a little on the side of the head. It And in a split second, even as drunk as I assume he was, he figured out what was happening and oriented his body towards the stage. And then in a, in a way, which I think he was trying to be amusing, just tilted his head back and opened his mouth. And I'm fascinated to this moment, how quickly he, like, because that's not, Mila, let's say something. When liquid hits you in the head in public, your first thought isn't, oh, that's probably something I can put in my mouth. Right, like, like yeah, no, no, Ew. but he assessed the situation in a split second and went. R- now you could again make the argument that he should have assessed the situation and jumped on the floor, but instead he he went the way he went. Uh, I'm never going to forget that. It could probably be one of the last things that I remember on my death. You know what I mean? Like when, <laughs> like your life memories are floating. What a beautiful through. memory. Oh yeah, really. I can't wait to That's share it with others. It was it was on. I have not made a word of that up, by the way. Um, strip club strip club customers are like super funny like if you ever just want to people watch go on a saturday night you'll have a great time can i ask you is there any are you sort of like a doctor in that it doesn't matter what physical condition the person you're seeing is like or (laughs) do you see what i'm saying yeah 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 no for yeah um i mean obviously it's super nice when the customer is hot but definitely have had like an old man with like nasty breath like lick my neck before. That Disgust. just made me upset. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> like this is not worth twenty dollars. <laughs> I just I just got the craziest chill through my shoulders and up through my neck, and then I started sweating immediately on my face. <laughs> Hold on a second. Yeah. Twenty dollars. <laughs> Yeah, it was just like a regular dance too. I was like, no. Oh my gosh. 
Oh, I really am upset now. <laughs> okay, hold yeah, on. Yeah, I finished that dance and ran away so fast. So you don't like you don't discriminate based on like body size, style, but I mean, what's the most egregious thing somebody can be? I'm guessing it's smelly, right? Yeah, yeah. If yeah, if you smell bad, like. <sighs> Do you ever it's tell somebody not. like it's this isn't worth it to me? You stink. No, because like I'm like embarrassed for them. Like oh. I can't tell them. I'm just like I'm just like I'm gonna finish my dance and walk away. Like you're not gonna get another dance from me, and I'm definitely not asking you to go to VIP. Mm. Is there anything that you do that you're on that you're uh, that's not great for you? Like like what about like so you we've discussed a very old guy, a smelly guy. Um, what about a young person? Like have you ever looked at a guy and thought he's too young to be here? Oh my god, yeah. I sometimes I'm like, okay, let me see your ID because. <laughs> You do not look of age. I gave a dance to a guy last night and he was 21. He looked like he was like 14. Yeah. Did it give you pause at all? Were you like, he's going to see my boobs and it's going to kill him? You know, like. Well, no, no. I'm just like, you're going to spend all your money. I got you. All right. I'm not going to be able to pay rent. I think it's, (laughs) I mean, I'm not judging you. I hope, I mean, you know that, obviously. Oh, no, no. I don't feel any judgment. No, I'm just trying to get to the. (laughs) I'm just trying to get to the ideas here. Um, <laughs> do you think that having a pump is going to cause you problems at work or you really don't think so? No, I don't think it's going to cause me problems because, um, well, I, at first, at first I thought that like my ducks cam would, but like, even with that, like I, I still make, you know, the same amount of money. So I guess I was just, yeah, I, I was worried that it would like just look ugly or like, like, I don't know, but now I'm just like, um, I would rather like have better control than not. Cause I live like so in the moment and I, I feel like I will regret it like later when I like have like complications or something. So your I just want to like, yeah, you're worried about your health. Isn't it funny? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. <laughs> it's listen. stupid. It's, you, is it stupid because you just talked about using cocaine and you drink a lot of tequila, but you're worried about your blood sugar. Yeah. <laughs> So you th- well, I didn't think of it that way. Well, now that you did, do you feel worse? <laughs> Are you like, wait a minute? <laughs> it's just, cr- I, I guess it's just crazy because to me, like those things, I'm like, well, everybody does that. You, so, so you're <laughs> like, you really, I'm enjoying talking to you a lot. Like you're, you could possibly not be more opposite of me. Like <laughs> I've never, I don't, if you, if you gave me three, like, little cups with liquid in them and told me one of these is tequila, like drink them and figure out which one I would have no idea which one is tequila. I don't know. I've never had tequila in my entire life. I, um, Oh my gosh. It's so crazy. I've, I've never been high in my entire life. I mean, you could, that that's, it's never even occurred to me. I know, but I guess my question is why it's never occurred to me. (laughs) <laughs> but like, but why? I don't know. I could ask. I, think, watches, I think you should at least smoke weed or like take an edible. I, I you know. I, it's not that I couldn't. I just it doesn't. If you put it here right now, if you said to me, "Hey, look, here's an edible. You take it at your leisure." I just wouldn't take it. You just keep it forever. Take it in your deathbed or something. I would probably watch it and one day look at it and go, "This looks dried up," and I throw it in the trash. Like I just, I oh would never. Gosh. Like it would never occur to me to do it. I guess at this point it's like for, what for? I feel like an edible, like you probably like call nine one one or something. You think I would call nine one one? I'm be probably, too high. I, I tell you, I probably am a lightweight because I had like oh a, for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. Like they give you this cocktail before you get um like a medical procedure, and I um the guy like had this and he's, he gave, the nurse kind of brought it. Oh, hold on a second. <clears throat> Sorry, my <clears throat> my voice just broke. Um, <laughs> the nurse comes up. And he's like, I'm going to give you this. He explains what it is. And uh, I said, listen, before you give that to me, you should know, like, I don't drink or smoke or do anything. And he goes, oh, I'm only, <laughs> he goes, I'm only going to give you half of this then. I was like, okay. I, oh, my God. I always wondered where the other half of it went. I, think, wow. I figured it went in his pocket. He was like, ooh, <laughs> all right. But um, Yeah, I just found it. <laughs> yeah, like, because I couldn't, like, I didn't need all that. Like, I really, it's just, it's, but again, not a judgment. Like, I, I'm not looking at your life and saying, why are you doing all this? I'm just saying it's like it's never occurred to me. I've had access to the things that you're speaking of. Opportunity. It's never occurred to me. I, it's yeah. And that's just like mind boggling to me. But, but, did it, but does it um, 
is is it ever something you think like one day I got to stop doing this? Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, like not like party and do Coke anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just, I guess it's just hard. The, I guess the day that I like stop like going out, like I, it won't get offered to me. Cause I mean, like I said, like I'll, I won't buy it. I'll always, like I'll always smoke weed though. Okay. But, so it's that- yeah. Coke. No, that's just like, it's just like a party drug. I'll phase out. So that's so when people say I know I'm going to sound ridiculous for a second to you, but when people say party, they mean in a building with a group of people who are mostly inebriated and dancing, doing drugs, yes. and doing drugs and drinking and listening to music. That's partying. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like I'm at the bar or something or at a party. Gotcha. But I, I, pretty much every single party, somebody's gonna somebody's breaking down some lines somewhere. For sure. So let me ask you this question. This uh, I'm going to give you a baby. Uh, we'll call him Billy. Uh, Billy's now, <laughs> Billy's now your baby, and he's yours to raise, right? Um, oh God! Yeah, it's <laughs> absolutely frightening. Trust me. So that's um, terrible. yeah, if you want to be like the guy licking your neck, that's nothing compared to having a kid. Uh, so um, yeah. yeah. So so Billy's on his way out the door one day. Um, he's going to go out. Uh, Mom, I'm going to go out with my friends. Do you say to him, well, don't forget to drink and smoke and do coke and have a good time, sweetie? Or like, <laughs> right, like, no, no. Honestly, what I would say is, um, I mean, if you're going to do any of that, be safe. And like, I mean, call me if you need anything. Like, I'll help you. Because I think a lot of times parents can be very, like, naive and thinking, like, that their kids aren't going to do drugs, aren't going to try it. Versus like educating them and like making sure that they, if they're going to do it, then be safe because, you know, just being like, hey, don't, don't go do that, Billy. Like, okay. Like yeah. what are the chances Billy's going to fucking listen to me? You know? Well, I so mean, it's like, give yeah. them the tools to be safe. I gotcha. Do you think your parents knew you were doing it? Oh yeah. I mean, well, yeah, my dad, like, I mean, the first time he caught me smoking meat, he was like, grounded me and then he gave me a bag of weed and was like you can only smoke it in the house right okay. so your dad sm- smokes too he caught you doing it how old were you oh i was 14 when he first caught me yeah and then the first time i did coke i was in 10th grade, 10th grade? Um, and then i never did it again and then in 11th grade i did it like every day in what situation in 10th grade was cocaine available to you in math class were you These like in- parties, dude? I'm not gonna lie. I have done a line in math class before in my book when the teacher wasn't looking. Oh my god! Like, I just pay pay more attention to the children <laughs> because we, I, me and my friends are some badass kids. And now that I think about it, I'm like, I can't believe all of the things that we were doing. Yeah, that's insane to me. Nuts. But that's why I'm like, no, kids be lying. Like, people think their kids are little angels. No. Mm, interesting. And then in eleventh grade, it was happening constantly. Yeah, because, yeah, I just, that's when I, I was buying it when I was in 11th grade. And, like, me and my friends were just doing it every day. We also, we had this group of guys, too, who, like, sold it, who would, like, come and pick us up from school and, like, do it with us. How, uh, how yeah, much money? bad people, really. Where do you get money in 11th grade to buy Coke? <laughs> where did I work? I think I worked at, like, Cold Stone. So, whoever was, was buying ice cream. <laughs> that, I just, wait, you got to give me a half a second. I'm going to take a drink. Hold on. <laughs> So I go into the Cold Stone to get a cone, and then I'm like, I see a cup there. It's like, hey, leave us a tip. And I, I stuff two bucks in it because, like, you're like this 16-year-old girl working her side job. And you're like, ooh, I'm so much closer to a line now. <laughs> That's what's happening? I mean, maybe. Are you trying to I feel talk like, me yeah. out of tipping? Because I think that's what's happening right now. <laughs> no, no. That's so funny, though. But, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Kids are crazy. I don't know. I thought it was fun. I I left a fairly large tip with a waiter one time. It was bigger than it should have been, and he was young. And I looked him in the face, and I was like, "Do not buy drugs with my money." Oh, he one hundred percent did for sure. And I was screwing around, but it froze him in his tracks. And now you're making me think that happened not because he thought I can't believe somebody said that to me, but because he thought, "Oh, shit, I was going to buy drugs with that." He's like, "How did he know? How did he know I was going to do that." <laughs> <laughs> well, now I'm going to just assume that's what's happening. For the most part, I mean, and, and social economic like lines are blurred in this scenario, right? Like, it's not like it's not like 
just like people oh, no. with no prospects and no money. It's people oh, like no. college educated people. Like it's it's up and down the line, right? Literally, like I would say every single one of my clients loves cocaine. And they're like, yeah, they I would call them, what is it like? What are they called? White collar? Mm-hmm. Blue? Whatever the collar is where they make a bunch of money, those collar people. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, one of my regulars here actually, I don't know how these people aren't having heart attacks at this point, but <laughs> I remember he was flying us out to Cayman Islands and we had a layover in, in Atlanta. And we stopped at, and like, we're in the airport, and he's like, You want a bump? And I'm like, Wait, you had this in your pocket the entire flight? Like, psychopaths. Mm. So, yeah, yeah, they all do it. Okay. If, like, when I say, like, everybody does it, like, you would be, like, shocked. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, y- y- listen, Mila, let's be clear. I'm fucking shocked. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you've, you've, I don't think you've said one thing that I haven't been shocked by. <laughs> but that's why you're here to tell me about this thing that I don't know about. Um, so uh, I, I want to like, I just keep imagining like that women are listening to this right now and they're like, Oh God, I think that might be my husband. You, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I, that's a, a worrisome idea, but at the same time, there's gotta be plenty of people who don't do anything like that too. You just don't meet them because you're. you're right. There. Sure. I mean, when there's, yeah. I mean, the, yeah, there, right. There's, there's good people out there. They're just not in, well, now that's, an interesting <laughs> that's an interesting statement. There's good people. Do you see them as not good people? No, I guess, I mean, you know, I just like, I guess like as far as I mean, like good people, I just mean like, mm, like straight edge, yeah. like you don't drink, don't do drugs. I don't think of that as a, a thing. Isn't that a, like, I like, if you said to me, you're a, an example of being straight edged, I'd be like, I don't, I don't, I don't know what you mean. Like I just, I just do what, like I just do what occurs to me. I guess that's what everyone's doing. You're so. just like you're just raw dog in life. Um, I guess is what they say. I mean, when I was younger, maybe, but <laughs> now I'd like to save it for a certain weekend. You know. So um, <laughs> I hear what you're saying. Okay, this is okay. Wait a minute. I I have to collect myself for a second. This happens frequently to me. Um, <laughs> can we talk about diabetes management for a couple minutes? Yes. <laughs> All, right. All right. So you have not had diabetes for very long. It's possible you're honeymooning. Is that possible? Have you seen that? Have you seen days and times when you just don't need as much insulin and it's kind of like kind of shocking how much less you need? Well, well, yeah. Well, the, he was telling me, my endo was telling me about honeymooning and I, I guess I don't, I don't really understand. Like, does that mean like I could like eat something with carbs and like I wouldn't shoot up? Because if I if I eat some of carbs, like I, I'll shoot up. But right. So I mean, what what can happen sometimes, Mila, and it may not it may not have ever happened to you, and it may not ever happen to you. Is sometimes there's almost like a like a sputtering of like your pancreas working, like it stops working, you get diagnosed, and then all of a sudden it kind of picks up again and starts making some insulin. So you're now adding man made insulin, but all of a sudden your body's like, no, no, I can do it, and now you have too, oh. you know now you have too much insulin. Um, but you would really know that if it was happening, it, it would present a number of different ways, but one of them might be like you're feeding, like you're like all day you have to snack or you'll get low, whether you're, whether you've like injected for a meal or not. Um, oh. has that ever happened? Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I've been like, I've, I guess I've gotten low before when I thought I was injecting. Right. But I don't know if it was like honeymooning or if it was just cause you got the number wrong. Maybe. I, I did something that I wasn't used to. Like when I went to the state fair in the summer, I had like my, like such a scary low experience, but I thought I'd be fine. Cause I ate all these, so many carbs mm. and pasta. And I gave myself seven units. Cause I'm like one to 10. Mm-hmm. So I thought like this pasta was like 70 and I had so much more than that too. I had like mini donuts and like all this shit that I didn't dose for. Okay. So I thought I only needed the seven and it like shot me down like to where it just says low and it was like double arrows. And I had to have like, I was like shaking and freaking out. I had to have like, had like three hot chocolates, some juices, a bunch of glucose tablets. And then finally it like went up. And then after that, I was like terrified of insulin. Did it go but, super um, high after that? Oh yeah, like I definitely overdid it because I was like freaking out. So okay. I didn't want to wait because I didn't know. Like I was gotcha. just by myself, you know. All right, I'm going to say something 
vaguely parental to you, but I don't mean it to come off that way. Okay. Um, in between tequila, cocaine, and putting your tea in somebody's mouth, I want you to listen to the pro tips of the podcast. Will you do that? Bernie? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. I've listened to a couple. I need to like start from the, from the beginning. Start at the beginning. Just kind of listen through because in the end, what you need is to have your basil somewhere near correct. And then you need to understand how to bolus for your meals, meaning that you like some foods are going to need like pre bolusing that's greater than other times. You're going to have to learn that the yeah. meal, meal ratios for different foods are different. So where you might be one to 10 for, I don't know, pasta, um, you might be one to 12 or one to eight for something else. And that pasta, yeah, it's right? so confusing. It, it, no, it, it trust me, it, I, I know. And like pasta is a good example, right? You, you eat it and it doesn't immediately spike your blood sugar up because it takes a longer time for your body to start digesting it. So if you, yeah, put, so see what I'm saying? You might need it for the pasta, but you might not need it when you're using it, if that makes sense. So the timing's mixed up a little bit. So then, like, you just like, do you wait to do the insulin then? Like, you eat, do you eat it first? There's all kinds of things that you can do in all different kinds of situations. Macaroni and cheese is a good example, right? So, mm -hmm. um, the pasta, and first of all, no judgment, but boxed macaroni and cheese is going to hit you harder than if you were to go out and buy some like good pasta at the store and boil it yourself and put like real cheese in it. Like, it, like, it, it's not going to be that much better, but it actually might be. Um, easier on your system. So the, oh. the fewer processed foods you eat, the more true you should find your carb ratio working. That's yeah, kind of like okay. a loose example. Um, but but with the macaroni and cheese as an example, you put it in, your body can't start digesting it right away. And um, it just takes longer to digest. So the impact from it might come later. It could come an hour, hour and 15 minutes after you eat it. Also, there's fat in the cheese. And the fat slows down digestion more, which pushes the rise up later. Um, what else could happen? Protein, you could eat meat, and meat doesn't have any carbs in it, but later when it's broken, yeah. when later when it's broken down, though, your body turns um it into sugar. So you could see a protein rise. So even people who eat very low carb, if they were to mm -hmm. go to if they were to go to McDonald's and like buy cheeseburgers and throw the rolls away and just eat the burgers they still might need some insulin 45 minutes later for the protein rise. And that's all covered in the pro tips. Like it's all in there. So Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm definitely listening to that. Yeah. I remember asking my endo about protein and he was like, no. They call those free, right? He probably tells you the cheese sticks are free. Yeah. 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 But, but does yeah. your blood sugar cheese, ever meat, go up free. after you eat that stuff later? Mm. I don't know. Not, I mean, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Because that's like all I snack on, and sometimes yeah. I wake up kind of high. Yeah, so you just have to pay attention to like what. Like this morning, yeah. This morning I was like 246. Yeah, that's high. We don't want that. So And then I went down to 198. So you woke up at 246, and then it came back on its own to 198? Yeah, so I'm guessing that was like maybe the tequila hitting or something. I don't know. It could be. I, 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 I don't know, because I didn't do any insulin. I just, it, it went back down on its own. What time of day do you shoot your uh, your basal insulin? That's the Lantus, right? Yep. Um, at 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 eight a.m. Ah, if I remember. So I'm gonna guess. That, I forgot to do it today. Mm, well, you got to do it, and I you got what I what I would guess is that the Lantus probably is not really lasting a whole twenty four hours like the label says. So maybe you're drifting up in those last eight ten hours of the twenty four hours because the Lantus is not as powerful at that point then you put the lantis back in and it starts working again that makes sense. yeah yeah because yeah it started going up at 3 a.m see and it went back down at 8 a.m so it's easier to do this stuff once you start understanding kind of like what's what's expected to happen so when you go on a pump you won't have that problem with lantis anymore because yeah because it just does it for for you yep you'll stop taking your lantis is in the pump too there's no Lantus in the pump. What'll happen is you'll stop taking oh. the you'll stop taking the Lantus. The pump will just oh. have your meal insulin. What are you using? Novolog or Humalog? You're yeah, in, yeah, Novolog, Novolog. Yeah. So you'll fill the pump with Novolog, and when you want to have a meal, you'll say, "Hey, like I just had twelve carbs," and it'll it'll you know based on your meal bolus give you insulin. 
but it will also give you tiny little spurts of insulin all throughout, oh, like throughout every the day. Hour. Yeah, for basil. That'll also be covered in the ProTip series. Okay. All right. Sweet. I want you to listen. I, like, yeah, I've no, had, yeah, I'm yeah. definitely going to. I've, I've listened to a couple of them. I mean, let me go to it right now. No, I know. Don't, but, don't you have it listed on your website? Of course. It's everywhere. You want me to so tell I don't you where have you can find to, it? Yeah, so I just don't have to like scroll and f- find which ones are the pro tip. Yep, you could listen to them at juiceboxpodcast.com. You can listen to them at diabetesprotip.com. You can find them by scrolling through your podcast app. But seriously, it might take you 20, 25 hours, you know, over the course of a month. But if you listen through those, I promise you, you will have a better understanding of what you're doing. And Oh, yeah, for it, sure. And, and it sounds like it's important to you. You don't want to... I mean, you're not looking to have like serious complications 10, 15 years from now. So you're going to need to understand all this, you know? Plus, we want those boobs to hold up. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's the main issue. Can I ask, are they more like small and perky or kind of big and wondrous? Hmm, that's a good question. They're not small. Mm-hmm. No, they're. I guess what the double D is in perky. Oh my goodness. Congratulations. (laughs) Are um, great. They're great. (laughs) (laughs) Did did you get them from your mom? Have you ever thanked her? Yeah, shout out to my mama. She has like size F though, so thank God mine like stopped. Wow. Hers are humongous. (laughs) What does the F stand for? Fucking huge, you think? Yeah. Yeah. Ginormous. Ginormous. Um Do your parents, listen, this is a silly question because I think the answer is yes, but do your parents know what you do for a living? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Have they ever tried to stop <laughs> My grandma, to too. My, they, they all know. Wait, wait, your grandma strips or your grandma knows? No, no, my grandma knows. Oh, my okay. grandma will just be like, go shake that ass, girl. <laughs> yeah, my family's like, you know, a bunch of like little hippies. Yeah. What, what, um, yeah, the, the time. What background are you guys? Uh, my mom's white and Mexican, and my dad was black, white, and native. Okay. He actually just passed away oh, on November 12th that's from crazy. a fentanyl overdose. Wait, wait. Yeah. I, that's what I was saying to you. Okay. So what was your dad using, and he got caught with something he didn't know he had? Um, I mean, yeah. So for the longest time, he was uh, had, like, painkillers because he up his legs really bad in a car crash like 15 years ago whatever so then you know he got addicted to pain pills um and then he discovered fentanyl but his girlfriend told me that he had been experimenting with it for six months but that's all it took wow to take him away from us so so sorry how old was he that shit's fucked um actually good question i don't know he was born in 63 hold on we can do the math together it's 2000 hold on i need a pen this is embarrassing. And I know you don't know because you, you were high. <laughs> no, I'm so highest, bad at math. You were high as f- in math class. So hold on a second. So it's <laughs> 2022. You said 63? 1963. Yeah. Now here, I'm going to do some math with you. So the two's over top of the three. So we have to move one over. So we take the one from that, make that two, one, bring a one over. Now we have 12. So there's nine. I got a nine. Now I can't subtract six from one. So I have to borrow again. So now the 19 makes that 11. And 11 minus 6 is 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 5. Your dad was 59 <laughs> years old. To this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn right he was. I wasn't high in math. I at least know how to do simple subtraction. <laughs> which yeah, still, better than me. <laughs> which I still had to write down. It's very embarrassing. Um, so I would have just used my calculator. But. Yeah, but listen, I knew you weren't going to be any help when you told me you lost 20 pounds. You were 145, and you're like, so I don't know what that made me. I was like, oh, yeah, she's, no, <laughs> she's not helping with this. Um, <laughs> um, much thinking. All right. So what have I not asked you that I should have asked you? Is there anything I missed or something that you think people should know? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't think so. No. Do you have a podcast about this? No, I, I just, I podcast about sex work. I know. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like you, how long have you been doing that? Oh, um, I don't know, just a year. Uh, yeah, just like a year. Do you want to tell people what the podcast is called? You can. Oh, um, it's called Other Words for Whore. With uh, There's an X where the O is for whore. Um, and yeah, it's on Apple and Spotify. And I just, I interview sex workers from like all over and we just take shots and talk shit. Wow. You get drunk and talk about this, about your job. 
Yeah. Yeah. What is the crazy? Yeah, and like you know, we just try to like you know, also like you know, a little bit of education in there. Like sex workers are people too. Yeah. yeah. No, I understand. Do you? Um, <laughs> I think that's important. Honestly, listen, I think it's important. I'm like, I'm not joking around. Like I've tried to be fun and have a good time here. Um, yeah. But I try really hard to let all kinds of like, listen, I think it's fair to say I'll, you know, this podcast is very well listened to and I, yeah. I could easily ignore stuff like this and pretend it doesn't happen and make everybody comfortable and happy. But the truth is that there are a lot of people listening to this podcast who drink, who do coke, mm-hmm. who strip who do all kinds of things who like you've seen yeah. you know the and those people deserve um stable blood sugars too and they deserve yeah, they yeah. deserve to understand what their basal insulin's doing and and everything else that goes along with having diabetes you don't get to not have a healthy diabetes like i know this sounds crazy but that you do coke doesn't stop me from believing that you should have good blood sugars <laughs> But I think some people yes, would think. You. But I think some people would think that. I think some people would think, well, she obviously doesn't care about her health. She's doing drugs and drinking. So who cares about the rest of us? But I care. Like the answer is, if if the, if the question is who cares, the answer is I do. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, I I wanted to have you on like to learn about your life because it's it's uncommon. It's you know it's it's interesting, um, and I think you should. You know, you should be applauded for finding a podcast about diabetes. I mean. Yeah, I'm so glad I found your podcast. Yeah. It's been super helpful. I'm glad. I, I really hope you dig into the pro tips because I think they'll be really valuable for you. I think the pump's going to be a big deal for you. Um, but understanding some of those things like, you know, that your blood sugar could go up in the morning when you wake up or that your, you know, some of those older injected basal insulins don't work. 24 hours sometimes or you know how to figure out the difference between different foods and stuff like that it's a big deal like it'll it'll go a long way to you getting your a1c lower eliminating low blood sugars and eliminating big spikes which is really what you're trying to do you're trying to not have big spikes you're trying not to have frequent lows and you're trying to have stability you know honestly as close to 80 90 95 as you can which will give you an a1c in the fives Yes. Yeah, so then you can just go kill yourself with something else, but at least it won't be the diabetes, damn it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> <We're> not... <laughs> as long as it's the tequila. Is, yeah, listen, let it be the tequila, not this. Also, do you seriously think you need help with alcohol? Like, should I be telling you to call a sponsor or something like that? Oh, <laughs> Like, I don't know no, where, no. <laughs> where my responsibility ends and all this. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> No, no, all right. I'm good. All right, so last thing. You have a daughter one day. She comes to you. She's like, Mom, I'm going to dance. You stop her or you support her? Um, I would definitely support her, but, uh, you know, I'd educate her first. Okay. You think- I, would hope, I would hope that, like, none of my kids, like, if I ever had kids, hopefully, like, they would not, like, have to. Because mm-hmm. I feel like most people, like, do it to, like, get out of, like, being poor. Yeah, so that's the one but thing you that, can make a fuck ton of money though so yeah, yeah no i mean it's not just not being poor right like i mean thousand right. dollars a night's a lot of money right no yeah once you're in it you're in it and yeah. so it's just like but it's not a lot it's not the lifestyle for everybody i mean you you, you hear how my lifestyle is so and yeah. not everybody can not, not even i can keep up with it so right are, are you do you think you're like particularly built for it or do you think that for economic reasons you just didn't have an, a choice um, no, I don't know. I think, I think I'm definitely built for it. I mean, I, I, I really, uh, having like a boss and like working like a vanilla job, like it just, you know, it just sounds terrible to me. Yeah. Like if you and yeah, I were just, dating, you'd leave me in like, what, like three days, probably you'd be like, Oh my God, I gotta go. Right. Like it's <laughs> why, wait, okay. why you're not looking for super normal, right? <laughs> or are you? I mean, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like, I feel like my, to me, my life is normal, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. No, I guess normie, I guess, is more of what I meant. Like, just kind of boring. I, I probably, like, my life would feel boring to you. Yeah. Pro- well, yeah, probably. I yeah. don't know. No, trust me. It was, it's, <laughs> almost, it's almost boring to me. So, I, you know. I, I, I mean, know. unless, do you go, on, maybe if you go to Mexico on vacation or something. I would if I could stop working long enough. But I just, I work a lot. 
So the I, podcast, I, right? Yeah. Dude, are you kidding? This podcast comes out. Oh, okay. I was like, do you have like week? another job? Another job. <laughs> I would not have time for another job. Um, I was going to say, yeah, yeah. What the hell? No, I mean, I have kids right there in college. It, like raising people is it's exhausting. Um, you know, yeah, like, I, I don't think I'll ever have kids. I have a dog and that's enough for me. I got you. That's good. Um, I mean, listen, because, I think people should do whatever congrats. they want. Like, I don't yeah. think people should feel pressured into having children, honestly. No, no. If it's not for you, it's not for you. And that there's nothing wrong with that. All right. Yeah. Nobody needs to be underneath my care. <laughs> <laughs> Even you? Hardly me. <laughs> did, did the diabetes thing seem unfair because of the lifestyle you live? Did you think, oh, this is like so unlike, because it's very regimented and there's nothing regimented about your it's, life. It's probably like the most like fucked up thing that could have ever happened. Yeah. It's just a lot of thinking and a lot of math and I'm so bad at math mm -hmm. and I hate like the fact that you have to like think about it constantly. Ugh, yeah. It's just annoying. A lot of work. Yeah, it's like a second job for no reason. Well, it's good reason. It's going to keep you alive. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, you guess. I'm trying my best. How's your hangover doing? <laughs> Is it getting any better? Yeah, it's actually getting better. Good. good. Do you work tonight? Yeah, I, well, if I want to. I'm deciding. Really? Oh, is it that? Is it kind of that loose? Not. Oh, yeah. We're not on schedule because we're contractors. We just come in when we want. What if, what if everybody rolls in on the same night? That <laughs> that wouldn't happen. Like, <laughs> oh, I see. You're, you're trying. Are you? It's trying hard to, enough to get us in. That's what I was about to get to. You're saying it's not like everybody's just running. So people kind of like. There's a lot of people who come in, take some money, use it up, then come back and get more again. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Gotcha. There's girls who are in every day, and then there's girls who, I don't know. I work like three days a week. Okay. All right. Well, that's <laughs> Jesus. Fun. I would like to work three days a week. That sounds good. <laughs> Sadly, no one is going to give any money to see my tip. So we're pretty much in trouble there. That's not going to happen. How many times? Well, you never know. You never know. You, don't, you never know. Trust me. I you don't, never know. Let me just say it a different way. I don't want to meet the person who would pay money to see my <laughs> Okay. How's that? That's a, that's a yeah. more specific statement. Oh, that's funny. Let's get an over under right now. How many times do you think I'm going to have to bleep out the word tip? Oh, gosh. I didn't even know you had to bleep that out so many times. Yeah. I mean, oh. pick a number you think it's going to be. More or less than... I'm I feel gonna... like we might have said it like 30 times. I see. I was going to say like 25. Okay. All right. Well, uh, after I <laughs> after I edit this, I will put the answer at the end of it so people know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're Thanks. delightful. I really appreciate you doing this very much. Um, Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. If you want to hold on for one second, I'm going to make sure you have access to the to the information you want from the podcast. I'll just make sure you know where it's at. And then I will let okay. you get back to your life. Hold on one second. Okay. Well, first I want to thank Mila for coming on the show and being so open and honest. And I'd also like to thank Dexcom, makers of the Dexcom G6 continuous glucose monitor. Head over to Dexcom.com forward slash juice box and say hello to Dexcom. If you're looking for that Omnipod Dash trial, that free 30-day trial, go find out if you're eligible at Omnipod.com forward slash juice box. And don't forget about the Omnipod promise. If you got an Omnipod Dash right now today and something huge came out tomorrow or the next day, you could upgrade as long as it's covered by your insurance. Go find out more. Omnipod.com forward slash juice box. Let me tell you a little behind the scenes story. So the day after I record with Mila, I record with Tony. Tony's got this young daughter. You won't hear her episode for many months, but, and I, I could hear her daughter at one point in the background. She had the sweetest little voice. And uh, after she and I recorded, I said, I'm going to be forever editing Mila's episode because she said titties so many times and she cursed and I'm going to have to pull out all the cursing. And I didn't, you know, I love the episode, but I was like, oh, it's going to take forever. And she said, maybe you should bleep it out with Arden's voice saying boobs. And I was like, oh, Arden wouldn't do that, but it would be funny. I said, actually, what would be funnier is if your daughter did it with her little tiny little baby voice. 
And later that day, I received an email with, I think, like four outtakes of her little daughter saying boobies. And it was just adorable. It turned out to be too much editing for me to slide it in every time Mila said boobies. But I wanted to put them here for you at the end so you could hear them. Just before I do that, I want to say I didn't have any trouble with any of the words that Mila used today. And if it was up to me, I would never take them out of the episode. But in order for me to have a clean rating for the podcast so that it can be heard in all different countries, I can't curse on an episode that says it's clean. And if I say an episode has curse words in it, then the podcast will be eliminated from some countries. Bleeping and childish words are the answer to that. Boobs. Boobies. Thank you so much for listening. There are a ton of other After Dark episodes. Go find them in your podcast player or at juiceboxpodcast.com. I'll be back very soon with another episode of the Juicebox Podcast. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I enjoyed bringing it to you. There's much more coming. Make sure you're subscribed or you're following in a podcast app or an audio player. Boobies, booby, 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 dooby, 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 boobies.